Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quartic equation. We have x to the, I mean z to the fourth power plus one equals zero and we're going to be solving for z. Okay, so z is a complex number whose fourth power plus one is equal to zero. And this should not come as a surprise because z does not have to be a real number. That's why its fourth power can be negative, which is what happens in this case, all right? So I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to use a strategy that was laid out by a French mathematician, Sophie Germain. There's an identity called as, uh, or known as Sophie Germain's identity, uh, because she came up with this, probably, right? Anyways, it's a really cool identity, by the way, and it allows you to factor some of fourth powers. So here's how it goes. If you have something like x to the fourth plus 4y to the fourth, for, to this, you can add something to make it factorable. And that would actually come from uh, completing the square. This is x squared squared. This is 2y squared squared. Now, when you have something like this, obviously, the term you need to add to both sides is 4x squared y squared, and of course you then have to subtract it. But what happens here is this part becomes a perfect square, and that is x squared plus 2y squared quantity squared. And then the difference, or the one you're subtracting from it, is going to be another perfect square. Therefore, you get difference of two squares, which is factorable as x squared plus 2y squared plus 2xy times x squared plus 2y squared minus 2xy. If you're really picky and want to write this in a more standard form where x squared and y squared are at the endpoints, you can kind of write it like this too, kind of like a quadratic uh, term because quadratics are very important in number theory. Anyways, that's a different story, but this is how you can factor it. Such a nice way to factor it. Good job. From something like this, we get that. Isn't that amazing? This actually a very important identity because we use this in number theory a lot of competition problems depend on this especially if you're that if you're asking you if they're asking you to find if whether this is a prime number so on and so forth for example x to the fourth plus four you can try it out but let's apply it to our situation because we don't have a four but that's perfectly fine so the idea is to add something to make it a perfect square so this is going to be z squared squared and this is going to be one squared so what am I supposed to add to this? I'm supposed to add 2z squared times 1, which is 2z squared, and then subtract it. Well, it's not uh, as nice as the other one, but still we can write it as a, as a perfect square, because this is basically z squared plus 1 quantity squared, and this is square root of 2 multiplied by z squared. Good enough. Now we're going to set it equal to 0. Awesome. And this is when the awesomest thing happens because difference of two squares is factorable. By the way, a lot of times with complex numbers, we go with sum of two squares, right? We can also talk about that next. But anyways, let's do this first. Now, since this is a difference of two squares, I can go ahead and just factor it and allow me to just write it directly so we don't have to take an extra step, would you? So let's write it as a full quadratic. This is the first factor. The second factor is just gonna uh, change the sign of the z term because one is a constant, it's not gonna change. Make sense? Okay, I switched them around. So that's how you can factor it, and this is just amazing. You know why? Because these are quadratics, and we can solve quadratics very easily by using the quadratic formula. There's a formula for it, right? Isn't that amazing? There's no quintic, there's no hexic, septic, heptic, uh, octic, whatever, but we do have a formula for this. Fairly simple, right, compared to cubic or quartic, if you think quadratic formula is complicated. So we can write one of the solutions, or maybe this one as negative b, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is going to be 2 in this case, minus 4ac, that's going to be 2 minus 4, uh-oh, we're getting complex solutions, that's expected, right, come on, we weren't expecting anything real, were we? So this is going to give us square root of negative 2, which can be written as plus minus root 2i, add it to this number and you're going to get the answer. So z is going to be negative root 2 plus minus root 2i divided by 2. Obviously, you can take out a negative root 2 if you want. No big deal. That's just going to give you 
the z value. Obviously, you can split it up and write the solutions as z equals negative root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i, and then z, and you can call them z sub 1 and z sub 2 if you want, negative root 2 over 2 minus root 2 over 2i. And if you look at these numbers very carefully, you're hopefully, you'll hopefully recognize the pattern here. Don't they look like cosine 45 degrees and sine 45 degrees? With some sign changes, of course, you kind of have to put it in different quadrants, just, you know, reflect it or move it or whatever. Okay, so that's the general idea. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the second equation, and then we're going to solve it the same way. Do you think we're going to get any real solutions? No, right? We do know we're not going to get anything real, so now this is going to be pretty much the same thing. The only difference is this number is going to be positive. Makes sense? So allow me to write z sub 3 real quick from here. This is going to be root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i, which is exactly in the first quadrant. And z sub 4 is just going to be, again, positive real part with a negative imaginary part. And that makes up all the solutions. And again, this is a cortex, so there should only be four solutions by the fundamental theorem of algebra, right? Okay, anyways, so let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. The second method is actually really cool because it uses the idea of the fourth roots of a complex number. Amazing, right? So now let's go ahead and isolate z to the fourth. So we're basically looking at the fourth power. So z is going to be negative 1 to the power 1 over 4. The fourth roots of negative 1, but there's four of them, right? So we kind of have to write negative 1 in polar form which can be done if you consider the argon plane. Negative 1 is going to appear here with an uh, argument, the principal argument of pi radians, and its modulus, obviously, is going to be 1, right? This is negative i. Oops, I meant negative 1, not negative i. Negative i is here. So we, we can basically write this number as 1 times e to the power i pi, right? But of course, you kind of have to consider the multiples uh, of 2 pi as well. So you can kind of write it as i times pi plus 2 pi n, right? And now we need to take the fourth root of this number. That's going to give you the following. So you can kind of write this part as 2n plus 1 pi. And then when you divide by 4, you're going to get something like this. i times 2n plus 1 times pi over 4. And then by replacing n with different values, you're going to get all the solutions. For example, if n is equal to 0, you're going to get the obvious one, e to the power i pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i, and the others will follow similarly. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at a third possibility here. Do you think there's a third solution? Maybe I'll just start it and then stop real quick. So we could possibly use a uh, sum of two squares here. So we kind of consider this as z squared minus i squared, and then this will be z squared plus i, and z squared minus i equals zero. And from here, obviously, you kind of have to consider two things, z squared equals i, so you're going to be looking at square roots of i and square roots of negative i. Pretty much the same idea, kind of broken down into two pieces. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.